Okay, well, this is Refuting Evolution. In this video, I'm gonna talk about uh, the fossil record. Uh, there are basically four things about the fossil record, uh, four things that simply do not match with the theory of evolution, uh, four things that evolutionists cannot explain. Uh, number one, we have out-of-place fossils. Number two, we have organisms that forgot to evolve. Number three, we have living fossils. And number four, gaps, or gaps in the fossil record. So number one, out-of-place fossils. Evolutionists usually say that a rabbit in the Precambrian will falsify evolution. Well, we don't have rabbits in the Precambrian, but we do find a whole bunch of out-of-place fossils. For example, Michael Cremo, in his book The Hiding History of the Human Race, reports hundreds of fossils and man-made artifacts that are found uh, to be dated much older than what evolution predicts. Um, this, of course, according to your own dating methods. Uh, some of these artifacts are hundreds of millions of years old. So, uh, this is kind of like a problem for evolution. Uh, recently, a 400,000 human tooth was found in Israel. Uh, this is also a problem because evolutionists uh, uh, claim that humans evolved in Africa 100,000 years ago. And they claim to have even uh, evidence from DNA. So, if humans evolved in, in Africa 100,000 years ago, why is there a 400,000 human tooth in Israel? Even more interesting, a 400 million years year old human skeletons have been f found in the lowest Cretaceous which is dated uh, as I said 140 million years old so this is very interesting uh, because uh, evolutionists do not deny that these uh, human uh, skeletons exist and they don't deny that they they were found in the Cretaceous but they say that these skulls are simply um, recent burials. I mean, they say that the, the skeletons were buried recently. But this leads to my main point. If we find a rabbit in the Precambrian, evolutionists will simply say that someone buried that rabbit in the Precambrian recently. So there's nothing that will falsify evolution. I mean, not even a rabbit in the Precambrian, because if we find a rabbit in the Precambrian, evolutionists will simply say that someone buried the rabbit and put it there. Now, they've done it before, they did it, they're doing this with these fossils, so evolution is simply unfalsifiable. There's nothing in the fossil record that will falsify evolution. But anyway, um, also transitional fossils. Um, transitional fossils are usually not found in the correct order. We don't see something like this, like fish, then uh, tectalic or any other so-called uh, half fish, half tetrapod, and then fully formed tetrapods. We actually find tetrapods older than tiktalic and all the other supposed uh, transitional forms from fish and tetrapods. So we don't, I mean, in most of the cases, trans transitional fossils are not even found in the correct order. They are not found in the order predicted by evolution. So what evolutionists always do is like, they get the fossils, they put them in the order that they want, and then claim that this is evidence for evolution. Uh, okay, number two, uh, organisms that forgot to evolve. Uh, with this I mean that there are um, plenty of organisms uh, that are found in the fossil record in layers that are supposed to be hundreds of millions of years old, and the animals are still unchanged. Uh, we have examples like the clam, uh, starfish, many insects, jellyfish, and many others. Uh, evolutionists say something like this, usually. Um, in an unchanging environment, stabilizing selection will tend to keep organisms largely unchanged. Uh, but a reply will be, well, mutations occur in DNA even in an unchanging environment. Uh, mutations are random. Mutations simply occur regardless if there is a sele selective pressure or not. And natural selection will not weed out 
at least neutral mutations. This means that at least some mutations will survive and accumulate. Uh, Moto Kimura, for example, uh, according to his research, the vast majority of evolutionary change at the molecular level is caused by random drift and selectively neutral mutations. This means that most of the supposed evolutionary change occurs due to neutral mutations, meaning that natural selection doesn't play a major role in most of the evolutionary change, meaning that most organisms should evolve r roughly at the same speed. So why are there uh, clams? I mean, why did animals like clams simply didn't evolve in so many years? That's an interesting question. Number three, living fossils. Well, living fossils are not simply fossils that forgot to evolve, as we mentioned before. But living fossils also prove that evolutionary assumptions are wrong. Uh, evolutionists start with two assumptions, and from there they interpret the geologic column. The first assumption is that an organism's appearance in the fossil record shows when it first evolved, and the second assumption is an organism's disappearance from the fossil record shows when it went extinct. Uh, based on these assumptions, we are supposed to believe that humans and dinosaurs never coexisted, but the fact that we have living fossils prove that these two assumptions are wrong. And number four, gaps in the fossil record. Uh, evolutionists say, usually, I mean, the reply uh, about uh, the gaps in the fossil record is that not every single species that has ever lived fossilizes. Well, this may be true, but uh, according to a study, John Curtin determined that 99% of the mammal species living today are also present in the fossil record. This means that 99% of the mammals that are living today are also found in the fossil record. This means that 99% or around 99% of the animals, or, or at least the mammals that has ever existed, are must should be found also in the fossil record. So, we will expect to find a fossil record, at least uh, in the mammal evolution, that is 99% complete. So, for example, for all the fossils, uh, I mean, for all the fossils that were supposed to, to exist uh, between land mammals and marine mammals, of all of the fossils that were, I mean, of all the intermediate fossils that were supposed to live, we will expect to find at le uh, around 99% of the ones that actually live, not only like two or three that we find in the fossil record. I mean, uh, with this I'm trying to say that uh, there is scientific evidence that most of the fossils, I mean, most of the animals that have ever lived, should also be found in the fossil record. So, the fossil record is complete, or at least nearly complete. So you cannot use gaps. I mean, you cannot explain gaps, okay? So the conclusion is very simple. The fossil record is far from being what evolution predicts. So when evolutionists say, how do you explain the fossil record? Well, there's nothing to explain. We don't need to explain anything because the fossil record is not consistent with what evolution claims or predicts. Mm, so, have a nice day.